My name is Erin. Today I'm going to be showing you a technique to make your very own fabric flowers like these based on the traditional Japanese art of kinzashi. We are filming today here at the Community Makerspace located at 751 West Union Street in Athens. Uh, amazing community resource with a beautiful secondhand fabric store where we got all the buttons and fabric for this project. I'll be showing you how to make fabric flowers in a moment, but first we'd like to let the Makerspace introduce themselves. The Community Makerspace offers a wide array of services to Athens and the surrounding areas. Our fabric shop, featured here, focuses on offering low-cost, good condition fabric and craft materials to local artists. They also host classes on learning how to get started mending, both by hand and using a sewing machine. You can find out when these classes are happening and sign up through our Facebook page, the Community Makerspace. In the same space, we have our sewing shop, available to members of the Community Makerspace. The space includes several standard sewing machines, an industrial machine, and several sergers. These can be used to complete projects or just for orientation and learning how to get started sewing. Beyond our sewing machine includes a variety of resources and tools to help you complete your projects, such as instructional booklets, scissors, crochet needles, knitting needles, and more. Next up is the room that holds our laser engraver and 3D printer, as well as a variety of examples of the potential uses of the machines, particularly our laser engraver, which can be used to engrave glass, wood, metal, and other materials. Beyond the fabric shop, the Makerspace holds metal, wood, and plastic shops available to our members. The metal shop holds a wide variety of tools, including tools for welding, soldering, and other metal work. Up next, the wood shop, which is one of our most commonly used spaces, provides makers with access to a heavy-duty planer, drills, saws, and plenty of space for their bulky projects. Finally, we have our plastic shop. This space is most commonly used to repurpose difficult-to-recycle materials. The plastic is shredded down, melted, and then revitalized by being turned into new items such as protective gear, flower pots, earrings, drawer poles, coasters, and more. Finally, I'd like to introduce you to one of our most commonly used services. The Community Makerspace has partnered with the Athens Public Library to revitalize the Tool Library. The Tool Library is now a free-to-use service for anyone who needs it. You can browse the library online to see what's available, reserve a tool, and then come pick it up and check it out for two weeks at no cost. The goal of the tool library is to help provide access to large, expensive, or otherwise inaccessible tools to people in this community with no barrier to entry. To check out what's available, you can visit the Athens County Public Library's websites to browse through the tool library. For info on any of the other services I've talked about, you can visit us at upcycleohio.com. Or feel free to swing by the space whenever we're open. We'd love to have you. So we have three basic petal shapes we're going to learn today. We have pointed, pleated, and round. You can use different petal shapes to achieve many different styles of flowers. And the reverse side of both the pleated and of the pointed have different looks so you can make different flowers just based on which side you decide to put up. You can also chase, change the look of your flowers based on how large you decide to make them. Just so you know, your finished flowers will be approximately the same size of the square uh, fabric you choose to make each petal out of. So this is a 3 inch flower, this is a 2 inch flower. In your packet, you've received 12 inch squares of fabric, and we've provided with 2 inch and 3 inch templates. Uh, so, you're going to take at least one of your templates and cut 6 to 10 squares of fabric um, from your piece of fabric. After you cut out as many squares as you would like petals, and you can mix and match fabrics and petal styles if you want. You've got this page in your handout that shows different examples like that. Have your pins ready. And the first step for all your fabrics is going to be this, all your petal styles is going to be the same. 
you're going to fold them in half diagonally like this. This is a stage at which if you have an iron, it's really nice to get that first fold really crisp. You can use steam if you have it. Uh, first petal style I'm going to show you is the round one. So for that one, take your square, fold it in half, and then you are going to fold both of the points down to the bottom and you're going to press that with your fingers then you're going to flip over the petal and fold those new side points in towards the middle and press them with your fingers as well and then you're going to sandwich them in between the two sides by folding it on itself like that you flip it over and you're going to put a pin through the bottom of it, catching all those layers. So this petal can look two different ways as I showed you. It can be round like this, or it can be pointed like this one. Depending on what you want your flower to look like, you can press on the end like this to get the round effect, or you can pinch the end to get that pointed effect. The next one we're going to show you is the pointed petal. So for that, you take your next piece of fabric and you're going to fold it in half so that the two long ends meet. And then you're going to fold one of those back down to meet the side. And then you're going to take this new point and fold it back over so it meets up with the long edge. You flip over your petal and do the same thing. Fold it to the edge, then press it, then bring this back over, and then you've got a pointed petal. Now this is another one that after you put your pin in you can decide which side you want up. So there's that look or there's this look. Different looks for different flowers. Okay, and the third petal shape I'm going to show you is the pleated petal. And that's again, it looks like this when it's facing up and this if you choose to face the petals down. So, you take your diagonally folded square again, fold it in half so the long edges meet again, and press. Alright, this time you're going to take this long top edge and fold it not quite all the way over towards the middle. You see I'm leaving this fold about a quarter inch away from the middle point there. And down at the bottom, it's a little bit a ways up from the bottom, and it's almost crossing over the middle edge here. Press that, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, press it, it's going to look like this. Now take that side point and fold it in towards the middle and just overlapping just a bit so up at the top you'll see it's kind of fanned out and then do the same thing on the other side so your petal look like that and you're going to grab a pin that is the pleated petal okay to assemble a flower you're going to thread the needle from your packet with the thread from your packet maybe about 20 inches it's going to be doubled up and then you'll need six to ten petals all one style or you can mix and match all right you're going to need to trim each one of these uh trim off the raw ends before you 
assemble your flower. So this page in your packet shows you what that will look like with each petal style. I'm going to go ahead and do it here. Okay, so take a petal and pinch it, and then remove the pin, and then you're going to take your needle and put it into the petal about an eighth inch from the bottom and center it across the width. So you catch all those folds, and then pull the thread through until you have about four inches left on this side. And then repeat that with all the petals. Like they're beads. And I didn't mention, but you don't need to tie a knot. You just want a good length of thread on this side of the petals. So just so you know, this is me working with the pleated petals and eight petals, so you can see what that will look like. Almost done. Once you get them all lined up like that, then you can go ahead and cut off the extra. Leave about four inches and you can cut off the needle. So I've got two four inch ends. And to pull this all together, you need to tie a surgeon's knot. If you don't know what that is, just watch. So you're going to take your thread ends and cross them. Then loop that once and then do it one more time and then you're going to pull gently your flower petals are going to start to form a circle and you're going to have to fuss with them a little bit to make them look like a flower but you can see as i tighten that i can adjust the petals more Don't want them too tight, but just nice and tense against each other. And once I feel like it's about where I want it, then I'm going to do another surgeon's knot. And around one more time. Make sure your original knot's tight. And then pull again, and you want to make sure these thread ends get pulled perpendicular to the flower petals. There should be a little bit of a hole in the middle of your petals. I'm going to just adjust 
till I'm okay with where those petals sit. And then I'm going to trim off those thread ends. As close as you can so they kind of disappear down in. Alright. Next we're going to add your flower centers and stabilize the flower. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple ways to make your flowers hold together after you assemble them. Easiest way is to use a glue gun. We weren't able to provide you with glue guns in your kit, but if you stop at the maker space, you can use one of their glue guns, and you can even hang out and make your flowers there. If you have a glue gun, take a spare scrap of the fabric that your flower is made from, and cut it a circle from it big enough to cover all the raw edges on the back of your flower. So just eyeball this. If you use the round petals, your circle will have to be a bit bigger because the uh, raw edge area is bigger. But I just try to fold this in quarters and see how big it might need to be. roughly a circle. You're going to take your glue gun once it's hot and just make a little circle on the back of your flower. And then squish your fabric circle on top of that. And if you made it too big, you can trim off the extra. So that's the easiest way. If you don't have a glue gun handy, in a pinch you can use um, two buttons and use them to sandwich the flower together. So pick whichever one you want for the top center of your flower. I'm picking that one. And then you're going to just kind of sew between the two buttons to make sure that your flower doesn't fall apart. So I'll probably, I'll tie a knot this time and then I'll put it in anywhere on the back of the flower and sew through that button and through the flower and then catch the top button. Go back through, go through the other hole of the other button, and just make sure all the petals are where you want them to be. Keep sandwiching and fussing with your petals until you get it looking good. Take the time to rearrange the petals a little bit. And then it's essentially going to look like that. And once you sew your one button on the front of your glue gun flower, then you have beautiful fabric flowers that you can decorate bags, barrettes, gifts, and more.
Thanks for joining the program. Have a good one.